For the first time since a news conference held late last year in St. Paul, Moose Lake School Superintendent Tim Caroline spoke publicly in our area about his experience of being abused by a member of the Catholic clergy nearly 40 years ago. Caroline is part of a group of about 20 individuals who have filed a class action suit claiming they were molested by the same individual. At a gathering at Westside Church, west of Moose Lake, Caroline talked about the events leading up to the incident and how it tested his Catholic faith and affected his family. This is the first time that I'll have been uh, in front of a, a group of uh, folks, I guess I could call you friends, I, I don't know uh, some of you, but uh, I spoke at a press conference uh, in November of this year and um, I figure that if I can uh, get through that I can uh, do this because I know I am amongst friends here so I appreciate the chance to talk to you. Um, I didn't prepare any note cards I'm just going to you know kind of talk and uh, tell you you know the whole story and uh, if you have questions, please feel free to, to ask, and I'm sure we'll leave some time at the end. To, so if you have follow-up questions, uh, feel uh, free to, to, um, to ask those. Uh, my early childhood, I guess that's where it all began in this situation. Uh, I grew up uh, in a very Catholic household, and uh, my brother uh, left home when he was in eighth grade to join the seminary, and he eventually became a priest. Back in those days, uh, kids would get into the uh, seminary very, very early, and so he went to uh, Onamia and became, uh, eventually became a uh, Glen Mary missionary. They uh, are located mainly in the southern part of the country. And uh, my uncle was a uh, Crozier seminarian also. He was a brother there. And uh, my family was very involved in the, our local Catholic church. And I was the head of our altar boy association. And so I grew up, you know, being pretty much Joe Catholic, you know. And uh, so um, we frequently had, uh, you know, friends of my brother, other religious people coming to our house, and so I was very familiar with the uh, clergy. And, uh, you know, grew up in that atmosphere of uh, respecting those that are, uh, you know, in the uh, religious profession. And, and um, so that is kind of my early background, you know, setting the stage of uh, having a lot of trust and faith in, in uh, the um, religious you know, area. Um, it was in junior high that um, I ed ended up going to uh, a Catholic grade school through grades uh, six, I guess it was. And uh, once in uh, seventh grade, I went to a, uh, a uh, public junior high school in the Twin Cities and still was involved in the uh, church youth group and singing in the, you know, youth group and all of that. Well, there was a uh, retreat that they were offering at the Dunrovin Retreat Center. And um, it was there that I uh, met a, one of the people facilitating the group, uh, Brother Ray Rose is his name. And uh, during the course of the uh, weekend retreat, uh, he asked if I would uh, want to come back and spend some time at a cabin. Um, down on the St. Croix River and, and uh, asked a couple of other friends and so we thought, holy smokes, that's fantastic, that would be great. So let's, you know, that would be just a wonderful opportunity. Well, it uh, turned out to not be <laughs> a wonderful opportunity. And uh, so it was at that uh, weekend and I'm not sure how much time had passed between the actual retreat that I attended, but we went back and um, we were pretty much shocked that um, he provided alcohol. He had uh, marijuana was there, and, and I, I believe me, I didn't inhale. <laughs> uh, I I was uh, I was raised a pretty good kid, and, and so that kind of scared me to think that you know I'm not going to do that. That's kind of nuts, but. Um, alcohol was served, and uh, I, I, it was probably my first full beer that I ever had. But um, it was uh, that evening then that um, I was molested. And um, it, 
you know, it's one of those things where you just go, what happened? You know, and you just, um, it's hard to believe. Um, you, know, you just kind of shake your head and, you know, a combination of fear. It's, uh, you know, having grown up, and I gave you that information at the beginning, you know, I grew up in a very strict uh, uh, Catholic, you know, upbringing, and how could somebody in that position do something like that? And so that was the really scary part, you know, about it. And uh, like a lot of people, a lot of kids, a lot of adults, you don't talk about it. And so I held it in for uh, quite a few years and just did not talk to the buddies that were there. Didn't ask them if anything happened to them. Didn't share what happened to me. Um, to this day, I, uh, I don't know. I contacted one here not too long ago, and he said nothing happened to him, but he was, oh yeah, he said, boy, when they had the alcohol and marijuana and all that, he said, wow, that was, you know, crazy. And so it was something that, uh, um, you know, I don't know if anything happened to the uh, one person I haven't been able to contact. But anyway, I, uh, you know, went through that, you know, through many years of just kind of repressing that and, and not thinking about it, not dealing with it. And uh, it was in, um, uh, when I first started college is when I just really had a discomfort. And I'm not going to be slamming the Catholic Church here, but I did not have a, uh, a comfort level uh, after what happened to me. And so... I uh, chose to start looking for another place that I could worship and through college I uh, went to a number of different churches and um, uh, in Duluth at uh, UMD uh, joined the um, InterVarsity which is a Christian fellowship group and so I kind of found a home you know in a, a variety of different uh, churches and, and groups of people and um, it was, uh, you know, one of those things where I, I, I knew I needed something, you know, but I just, uh, I, I just couldn't, you know, handle the, the, the Catholic Church at that point in time. Um, parents were, uh, when I first told them, you know, they were, I think they knew something was going on when I was going to a lot of different churches, and I was pretty open on that. And, uh, you know, it was very disappointing for my parents to have me not be Catholic, you know. How come you're not going to the Catholic Church? And, uh, and when I first uh, talked to them, it was, you know, uh, that didn't happen. We don't want to think about that. Uh, you know, that would not happen. Um, you know, just denial. And, um, you know, now I understand, you know, uh, no parent wants to have to do that or face that. So um, it was, uh, I came to Moose Lake and uh, you know, met my uh, future wife here and uh, we were married and, and had our first child and uh, I told my parents that we were going to be having our child baptized in the Lutheran Church and um, that was a very trying time for my parents. Um, uh, my dad did not, well, my mom and dad would not come to the baptism, and, and uh, uh, I received a letter from my dad basically saying, you know, that's, um, you know, a lot of things have happened to a lot of people, and they didn't give up the, the Catholic faith, and, you know, couldn't understand why I was. And so uh, that's something that I'm still having to process, and, and uh, you know, all those feelings attached to that. Coming up in part two, Caroline shares with us why after nearly four decades he felt the need to finally come forward with his disturbing experience. For the Moose Town Crier, I'm Paul Staub.